Hey guys, welcome back to The Behaviour Revolution. My name's Mark and I want to talk to you about being unclean this morning. An amazing article came up on Facebook last night and it's all about what is unclean? I mean, let's look at the Hebrew words here. It means to be foul. To be foul. There was a foul smell in our kitchen this morning. One of the eggs had been uh, rotten from the egg farm. It had gone off. My wife reckoned there was a baby bird starting to grow. You should have smelt the smell. It was completely rank. It was foul. She's pouring bleach into the sinks and, oh, it was full schism. You know? So to be foul. In a ceremonially or moral sense, to defile, to pollute, to make unclean. Foul in a religious sense, defiled, infamous, polluted, unclean, religious impurity, filthiness, unclean, nudity, literally, especially with prudent or figure, disgrace, to blemish, nakedness, shame, unclean, sacred person, prostitution, idolatry, sodomite, unclean. These are some understandings of the Hebrew of what uncleanliness is. I mean, if you've been going following Leviticus with us for the last couple of months, you understand that unclean was so important. You couldn't go anywhere near Yahushua if you were unclean. You had to be ceremonially washed, and then you had to have sacrifices made for you to make you, un to make you clean, to make you set apart, so that you could enter his presence and offer sacrifices and be in a healthy blood covenant relationship with the Creator. He can't be around anything that's unclean. The understanding man has been given from religious interpretation without the Ruach is nothing short of an abomination. Abomination. So man's interpretation of scripture without the Ruach is an abomination. I believe that. It has rendered men and women unclean and unfit to approach Yahusha. So if you're not washed in the blood of Yahusha, in his real name, you have no relationship. Religious understanding of the covenant is just man's mindset without light. Religion states that the Old Testament is obsolete. Whilst Yahushua says he has renewed the old covenant into a better one. He has renewed the old covenant, the original covenant, blood covenant of deliverance. He's renewed it into a better one. Same covenant, just better. It's been upgraded. Yahushua did not agree with the ceremonial laws from the beginning. The old priesthood slaughterings and ceremonial laws is what Yahushua cancelled. He fulfilled them and he breathed life into them. You know, nothing's done away with. He transforms every single instruction, guys. So he didn't want all this stuff. He wanted the Garden of Eden. That was his original plan, the Garden of Eden. But through man's seduction by the dragon, he had to lay out all these shadows little tiddlywinks and stuffing around so they could have their minds washed and understand him when he came along. He didn't. So his blood is the only thing in this universe that can deliver us and make us clean. His blood is the only thing in this universe that can make us clean. Got that? If we look in Hebrews 8 for a fullness of the truth, Yahushua, our high priest, is seated at the throne of greatness in the Shamim, which is in the sky, through the portal. He's in the high dimension, seated on the throne of greatness. He serves in the set-apart place, the true tent in which Yahuwah set up and not man. So he set this up, not us. This is him. The priests of today serve the copy and shadow of the interdimensional tent, the other tent, the heavenly tent, the other tent. Heavenly the priests of today serve you who are set up not by a man. The priests of today serve a copy and shadow of the higher tent. Yehusha warned Musha, see you build the tabernacle according to the pattern. See you build the tabernacle according to the pattern shown on the mountain. Yehusha obtained a more excellent service. He is the mediator of a much better blood covenant constituted on better promises, way better promises. For if the first had been faultless, then they wouldn't have needed a second one. If the first had been faultless, they wouldn't have needed a second one. It's the same blood covenant, guys. But all the instructions and sacrificial system, if that was all we needed to approach Yahushua, why would we need Yahushua to die? So he died and breathed life into this everlasting blood covenant. 
And he said he was going to conclude with the house of Yishorel and Yehuda a renewed covenant. Yehusha said that Yishorel did not keep his covenant, so he disregarded them. This is the blood covenant I shall make with the house of Yishorel, giving my instructions in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts. So they're not on tablets of stone anymore. They're in their minds and on their, written on their hearts. So he circumcises our hearts. I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. By saying the word renewed, he has made the first one old. If you renew something, you don't go back to the old version, do you? You don't go back to the original. You keep going forward. You go to the renewed one. So by saying renewed, he's made the first one old. Now, what becomes old and growing aged is near disappearing. This statement does not say the Old Testament is obsolete. Only Israel. This is the lie of religion that has defiled this world. Yahushua has renewed the covenant by cancelling his relationship with Yisrael and instituting a new priesthood, Melchizedek, with no animal sacrifices, for he was the last sacrifice. He has transformed everything, guys. Yisrael is not the lineage, worldly people in the Middle East anymore. Any race, tribe, culture, creed can come to Yahushua being grafted into the commonwealth of Yisrael because it's his Melchizedek priesthood. Those washed in his name. So claiming that you are from some tribe, oh, I'm from the, originally from the lineage of, you know, Yehu and Dan and all this sort of stuff. So what? That's old Yisraelite. Old Yisrael. Old Yisrael was divorced. They played the whore multiple times and Yahushua divorced them. And then when he died, he raised up a renewed blood covenant, not only with those who would be obedient among Yisrael, but of the whole world. They still have to be engrafted into the blood covenant. This tells us much of what is going on behind the portal. We need to approach Yahushua through his instructions to experience being washed clean from all uncleanliness. Following these instructions must be done in belief. Otherwise, we will not experience the light. Remember, the first covenant was cancelled with Yisrael and then renewed for his bride. And his bride is consisting of everybody. Anybody can come and be his bride. Got that? Religion has contaminated his instruction by interpreting without the Ruach. Wasn't that phenomenal? Being unclean. We cannot approach being unclean. So our behaviour has to change, brothers and sisters. I mean, even after we come to Yahushua and we are washed in his blood, all that means is a portal is opened within us. The Father and the Son, Mashiach, comes and lives within us. And then we go through a Hebrews 12 experience. Flogging, rebuking, flogging, rebuking, chastising, was the fourth one flogging rebuking chastising disciplining so that we will bring forth the right fruits of right behavior where do the fruits come from from the portal the right fruits of behavior love joy peace patience all those fruits that's why we are trained and that portal opening within us is where we have direct access but if we want to stay unclean and not listen to the ruach not listen to yahushua's voice and keep overcoming then do you have access? I mean, the door is open. Yahushua said, I open a door, no one can shut it. You know, the door is open, but we don't go to the light because our deeds, our works, our behaviours are unclean. You got that? Just because there's a door open doesn't mean we run in there because we listen to all sorts of pestering and ridiculous, evil, wicked thoughts, don't we? And Yahushua hates it because he's opened a door. So we need to become un we need to become clean. We are all in a state of uncleanliness. And when we get washed in his blood, we are now seen as clean in his sight. But we have to be clean. We have to overcome and behave and be clean. So that when he comes back, we're like-minded with him. We're sharing his mind and behaving as he wants us to behave. So it's not about where you work, what you do, what your family's like, what house you live in, what clothes you wear, anything external does not matter. Haven't we just discovered that going through Leviticus? External things do not matter. They are all regarding the old blood covenant. And even though it's the same blood covenant, he's renewed it. 
by putting his Ruach within us and showing us that we are accepted, it means that our physical bodies, forms, everything cannot boot him out of the camp anymore. Because remember, if there was any uncleanliness, he had to leave the camp. He had to leave the camp, otherwise he would, his presence would just destroy us. But his blood fixed that. And he's gaining back time and space through our vessels. Gaining back time, not just the Shabbat day anymore. Every day he wants us. Not just in a little bit of our vessels, not just a little bit of our heart. He wants all the space, all the time and all the space of us and eventually of his world. He's taking back ground. He's taking back his world through us, through this portal. So this whole idea of being clean and unclean is just so important. It's been a blowout to me. And this has come right at the end of Leviticus. I'm about to put out the last few episodes of Leviticus, and this has come up as well. What is unclean? It just hones it all in, pushes it all in, summarizes it, and lets us see that we can be unclean today. Even though some would say we can't do anything to be unclean because Yahushua's washed us in his blood, and his blood can you know, is more powerful than anything. That is true, but are you going to make it to the first resurrection, to the wedding feast, if you are unclean? He says, any, anybody doing abominable things, we saw what all the abominable things were, didn't we? Baby, uh, baby sacrifices, sodomy, tree worship, eating blood, all these other things that are an abomination. Well, what about the beginning of this? It says, Interpreting the scriptures and reading and behaving them without the Ruach within us, without Yahushua's influence and guiding us and teaching us is an abomination. Because you're in religion. Religion is an abomination. That's why it's all crumbling. Catholic institutions crumbling. All the institutions are crumbling slowly but surely. Yahushua won't put up with them anymore. He's only talking through his bride. So if, if Yahushua's talking to you and he gives you something amazing, Put it up on Facebook for us all to see because that's what I'm looking at now. I look at the timing of things. This article will come up and then this and that and this and that while I'm thinking this and this and this and this. And I think this is Yahushua letting us know that through all the crap and attacks and negativity that comes at us all day every day, he's letting us know through the mouth of three, not just two, three or four witnesses often, that his word is true. And if you do it, you have life. Because you're accessing him through that portal. That's why I've been putting up all this stuff about the portal lately. I've never known it like this. You can go into your portal. You've got to put yourself off though. You've got to die, surrender what you might want to say or do or how you might want to rise up and behave. You've got to put all that off. Humble yourself. Go into the portal. How do you want me to behave here, Father? What should I say? What should I do? You know? It's so important, guys. So... Stay strong and uh, just remember being washed in Yahushua's blood and uh, going through ritual immersion, uh, which is the sign of our good conscience, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for your deliverance to engraft into Yisrael, which is his bride. But when you look at it, half the bride's wise and half the bride's foolish. So even though you've taken all those steps, Half of Yisrael, the bride, is foolish and half is wise. So which one do you want to be? Love you guys.